So, Dr. Vince. <laughs> yeah, Vince. Yeah, Vince. <laughs> Vince. <laughs> I think you should just quickly explain that because that is amazing. So you've just been awarded a, is it an honorary doctorate? Is honorary that doctorate that? in philosophy, and it was a few months ago by the University of Gloucester. Wow! I want to do a really brief history of Ecotricity just to kind of paint the picture. As I don't know how you know, how old the company is when you set it up. Probably first used the name Ecotricity in about 1998, but we started right. as an electricity company, green electricity company, in 1995. Right. We were then the renewable energy company. Um, and but I started in wind energy in 1991 when right. I was hippie living on a hill, you know, uh, <laughs> dreamt of building a big windmill. That took about five years, and by 1995 I'd realised that the uh, the only way to get a fair price for the electricity was to cut out the middleman and, and be an energy uh, supplier. Right. So that's why Ecotricity came to be. So, well, so, so you saw how much electricity you were generating, and then what? Then it was going through one of the big six, as we well, now know them. Um, well, it was about a year before I got to build that first windmill. It took five years. Four right. years in, I could see it coming. I'd finally overcome all of the hurdles, and I went to see the local uh, electricity company, MEB. They were monopoly buyers of, uh, of embedded right. energy at the time. That was about to change the, the following April. And I went to see them and, uh, and to try and you know, negotiate a, a fair price, and they just laughed. Right. You know, they, they, laughed at the idea of green electricity. They said, what is it? Who wants it? Wow. Know, Here's our rubbish price because we're a monopoly buyer. They said to me, more or less. You know, yeah. I paraphrased, but not much. Yes. And <laughs> that's, uh, left that meeting and thought, well, look, you know, yeah. anyway, the only way to build more windmills is actually cut out these, these middlemen, these, these bad people, and uh, be an energy company. You're right. It was a crazy plan. Yeah, so because I mean, at that stage, I mean, there really were only the big monopoly companies. There wasn't, there wasn't anyone else. Were yeah. there any other players in the market at all? Sort of small uh, no, energy providers. No, no, there weren't. No, and you, uh, you, if you built a windmill, which I was about to do a year later, you had to sell your energy to them. Wow, they were monopoly buyers. That right. changed on the first of April, nineteen ninety-six, and that was the first day we got started. Right. All that I, ever since I met you, all that's happened with Ecotricity is it's got bigger. Yeah. You know, and you employ more people, and it's you know, and that, and you presumably built more turbines in that time. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We're at um, sixty odd megawatts now. We've got four machines that we're building uh, as we sit here. That right. They'll be live in September, but we've got planning permission for about another eighty. Right. Uh, but struggling to clear a few grid issues and raise the money and that kind of right. stuff. But they're the normal struggles, so it's just a matter of time. The popular general opinion is there'll never be any more land-based turbines because no one's going to allow in this government don't think there are all that stuff. But there, are there still new ones coming online that are, that are on land? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, you know, every opinion poll shows that most people in this country support the idea of windmills local to where right. they live. And uh, even the government's own surveys tell them that. And then we undertook a YouGov poll a couple of weeks ago to say to people, what would you rather have, a windmill or a fracking rig in your yeah. backyard? And uh, you know, it was two thirds one third. Right. I right. think it was three quarters, one quarter right. actually. Yeah. So uh, wind is massively more popular than fracking. Uh, it's just that the you know some elements of the press and some elements of the Tory party yeah. have uh, kind of you know, made it their thing. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure not in the least bit influenced by any lobbying from no, fossil fuel companies that would have nothing to do with that. Any and even suggesting that is potentially libelous, <laughs> and I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> But so, the, the, I remember this, some of the intriguing things that I remember when I first met you and we first spoke was your sort of complete optimism that it would be possible for us to be 100% renewable powered in this country. I mean, is that, st do you still, yeah, do, yeah. you still Yeah, I don't think it's just that? possible. I think it's, uh, it's probable, you know, it's more than probable even, is that you only have to, it's just a matter of time. It's yeah. a matter of how far into the future you want to go. Yeah. Uh, unless nuclear fusion comes along, which is a big unless. Yeah. Um, you know, fossil fuels are running out. We are utterly dependent on them at the moment. Um, we have to become utterly dependent on something else. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be renewable energy. And now the other thing that I benefit from enormously that, that you've set up is the electric highway. Yeah, by the end of this year, this year it will be every service station in Britain. Wow. Every one. And most of them will have two pumps now instead right. of just the one. Because that was a, a fascinating thing, that, that, and it's a thing that's discussed a, a great deal uh, in the kind of comments and things, is how is that there's a sort of slight annoyance from fossil fuel car users that it's, that it's free, yeah. and they, they would go, nothing's free, you know. Where, yeah. But, uh, it, I mean, it's a fascinating area because you, at the moment you say, I mean, I've got a card that you sent me for nothing, 
and I put the card on the thing, it goes ping, I plug it in, and it yeah. fills with electricity, and I undo it and put it back, and I always make sure it's tidy, and I tidy the cables. Yeah. <laughs> I like trying to be a good customer, yeah. but it doesn't cost me anything. I mean, I, I don't know how much electricity I've used, but it's got to be in the hundreds of kilowatt hours by we, now. We probably know. Yeah, I bet you do. No, I know you I haven't know. seen it, but no. we probably know. I try, I try not to overuse it. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then that, and at the moment, clearly there's what there's four or five thousand electric cars on the road that potentially could use those charges. Yeah, I think there's ten thousand on the road in Britain, and I think right. we've got nearly two thousand registered users of the electric right. highway. And we just crunched the numbers last week, and in the last twelve months, because our year ends at the end of April, uh, we provided enough power for a half a million uh, miles right. of electric driving right. on motorways, which is kind of a pretty big number. Yeah, uh, we think we'll do easily a million this year. Right. Easily. And, uh, and so it's, you know. But the cost, because that was interesting, because uh, in, I was talking to one of your colleagues about it, the, co the cost for you is really in the installation and the actual mm -hmm. machinery, the, and, and the electricity cost is, is almost irrelevant. I mean, you're yeah. producing a lot of electricity anyway. It's relatively small, but yeah. growing. Yes, growing I mean, because that's what I'm, I mean, that's the question that people ask, because eventually, yeah. so you say there's 80,000, 100,000 electric cars, yeah. and you have 20,000 uh, users. Yeah. That electricity cost. Yeah, eventually could, uh, we'd have to charge it. I mean, the important thing was just to get started. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for a number of reasons, uh, it didn't make sense to try and charge at the beginning. Um, well, it, it costs money to charge. It costs money to charge. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, we, we've got to build a back end for that, and we're planning probably uh, from January next year that we'll start charging to use the pumps. Right. So there is, there's a kind of crossover of different of different things. We need to see the usage go up so that we can justify the cost of having a back end that, yeah. that, that charges people. But also we're you know we're quite happy to begin with to say it's free because it kind of attracted attention which we wanted and, yeah. you know media attention to the idea that you can drive your car for free. Yeah. Because um, more than anything else, we want people to be looking at the electric highway and thinking, actually, you know what, I could be using this. I could have the kind of car that can use this. And, yeah. You know, and I can drive without pollution, and uh, and then at least in the short term, the the energy on the motorway is free. Yeah. And for us as an energy company, we we see a, a kind of a, a major overlap between the um, the roles of let's say more traditional energy companies in the 20th century, when you'd have an energy company that powers homes and businesses with gas and electricity, and then you'd have another kind of energy company that produces oil, petrol and diesel and yeah. powers transport. 21st century we see those two coming together. Right. Yeah. And and uh, as an energy company we see we see it as our job to power people's homes and and vehicles. Right. Yeah. And the nice thing about renewable energy is because we can all have a piece of it on our roofs or yeah. in our garden, you know, we can make our own energy for our homes and for our cars. Uh, so it's a great kind of uh, it's a liberalizing thing. Yeah, well, yeah. Wind energy, you know, it's the most cost-effective form of renewable energy, I'm sure. Well, because that, I mean, that's, a, I think that's a really important point. That, so, so many people go, well, it's obviously done this, and it doesn't, you know, uh, completely ignoring the fact, because it's normal that the, fuel, the coal industry is subsidised, the oil industry is subsidised, the nuclear industry is subsidised yeah. off, off the scale. Yeah, off the scale, yeah. <laughs> the fracking industry is subsidised. The fracking industry is subsidised. By the world's most generous tax regime, at, yeah. uh, and other things. And the other day I read an article about uh, rail, uh, privatization, right? And I didn't understand. I didn't realise that uh, we still subsidise the privatised rail industry to the tune of four billion pounds a year. Wow, four billion pounds! Wow. So they, that's a, that's a they, free market, <laughs> free market <laughs> economy at its finest. As long as you don't mind paying tax for it to keep it going, that is shocking. It is. Uh, it is. They no. should be making their own money. I mean, the total cost of the feed-in tariff uh, last time I saw it, which wasn't that long ago, was about about three hundred million pounds a year. Three hundred million versus. Four billion. Yeah, and and yet you know the certain elements of the press will make a big fuss about the huge amount of money being spent yes. on renewable energy. But not trains. Yeah, you know for which the price goes up every year. Up. The reason electricity is so expensive is you can't store it. Yeah, and you've got to make it on demand. And we have these huge peaks and troughs of yeah. demand on the grid, and so you have a bunch of power stations sat idle waiting to hit the peak, yes. and then turned off and sat idle again. Yeah, and that all costs money. Yeah, so uh, grid scale storage, I think, is really. Uh, a really interesting part of the future, smart grids and all that kind of stuff. But we have a project that uh, takes a different approach to that, right. which is a distributed um, method of storage. So it happens at the household level, right? Which is the deepest, uh, deepest distributed electricity on on the network. So it's where most losses are uh, incurred to deliver to the house. Right. And our we call it black box because we haven't got a better name for it yet. Uh, so the, our black box will change the shape of household demand. It will basically take houses off the grid during the rush hour of grid demand right. and put them on in, in the off-peak. Uh, 
and we calculate that if every home in Britain had one, we need 15% less power stations, which is the current nuclear fleet, right. funnily enough. But it would make a huge difference to the load factor efficiency and cost of the grid. And this is, this is effective, the black box is effectively a relatively small battery yes. that would run the house for two or three hours or yes, something like that. Exactly right. that exactly so that. you don't need one that runs for days. No. You need it, you need, and, and that can then recharge at night during the off-peak yes. period. Yes, or in our case, they'll be centrally controlled, and if we're long in wind at a particular point, we'll get our thousands of black boxes just to absorb it, and right. if they're short, we'll just get them to keep it back. Right. So you can use it to balance uh, yourself as an energy company. Yeah. Particularly important when we're balancing uh, renewable energy, which is intermittent, yeah. driven by the weather. So that I mean, also makes a huge difference in the terms that it's widely distributed, i.e. you don't need to send a load of electricity from Scotland down to Cornwall. Yeah. It's already in Cornwall. That's right. <laughs> and, it, and it makes even more sense if you've got renewable energy on your roof. Yeah. So when you're not using it, rather than export it to the grid where it gets absorbed into the loss pool, keep it in your batteries right. for when you need the power. And that's the most economic way to use renewable energy that you make yourself. Yeah. And um, can I ask one last thing? When can I have a black box? <laughs> Could could be in a few months. Right. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, we're hoping to run a kind of hundred home trial in a few right. months' time. I'm, I'm signing Sign up. up now. Yeah, I'm going to sign up. Let's go. Let's go.